I don't think I reviewed any books by her on my uh, YouTube account. Uh, Hannah Arendt, the German-born uh, political philosopher who came to the United States during the first months of Hitler's reign in Germany, um, has always been one of my favorite uh, political thinkers and probably one of my favorite 20th century philosophers, too. This isn't a book uh, by her, but it's a book about her by uh, another thinker who's quite famous in her own right. Um, the book is called Hannah Arendt, Life is a Narrative by Julia Kristeva. Julia Kristeva is, um, as I said, uh, known for her own writing. She's a, uh, a practicing psychoanalyst. Um, she's taught uh, widely in France and uh, and has taught in the United States a bit. Um, she's also known for um, her writing in, in, in philosophy. She's also a linguist and a feminist, um, but she's heavily influenced by people like Lacan, Jacques Lacan. Um, so um, she's, she's a pretty interesting figure who's, who's uh, a lot of whose work has been appropriated into, you know, literary theory and stuff like that. But um, this is basically just a very uh, short but um, quite dense uh, evaluation of Hannah Arendt's contributions to uh, political thought and political philosophy. This is also a collection of, uh, it just happens to be a collection of the five Alexander lectures that Julia Kristeva delivered at the University of Toronto in 1999. Um, what it does, um, what she tries to do in the lectures is uh, attempt to sort of spell out certain aspects of Hannah Arendt's political philosophy, including her idea of the political, um, the vita activa versus the vita contemplativa, or the, the, the contemplative life versus the active life uh, distinction, which uh, Arendt often deals, deals with. And the influences of various thinkers, um, especially Aristotle and Heidegger, on Arendt's body of work. Uh, Kristeva's main focuses are Arendt's con conceptions of language, the self, uh, what she calls political space, and the body, addressing all with a particular focus toward the deployment and usage in political life. During the first two lectures, Kristeva convincingly, I think, makes the case that at the center of Arendt's political thought rests several distinctions which enable us to live political lives. Uh, political in the sense of one of Arendt's most obvious uh, influences, that is Aristotle. Aristotle said that uh, man is a uh, zoon politikon, right, uh, a political animal. Um, that we are by nature social animals, in other words. Um, she says that we interpret, understand, and react to our world through and by our own unique ability to create narratives. The ability to share life and action and share thought in an interactive human matrix arises from what Nietzsche called the shaping power of human memory. Uh, Kristeva beautifully sums up her argument in the first part of her book, uh, in my judgment, the best part, in the following way. She says, Throughout the life of narrative seen as a quest for shareable meaning, it is therefore not a total and totalizing work that Arendt seeks. But neither does she seek the creation of a political space that would be in itself a work of art. To see the essence of politics as a welcome phenomenality, a locus of pure, pure appearance that has been freed from the schema of domination, seems to represent an aestheticization that does not correspond to Arendt's thought. Uh, the aestheticizing reification of politics that we see in national socialism does not reveal the non-political essence of the political, as was once said, but its death. For Arendt, if political life is separate from its story, which demonstrates to all, um, in, in, uh, in Greek that would be doike moi, um, excuse my pronunciation, um, it, which demonstrates to all its conflicts, uh, 
it is to the extent that political life resists its own aestheticization. It sees itself as an activity, a praxis in the Greek, uh, that cannot be reduced to a simple product or poesis and allows itself to be shared by the irreducible plurality of those who are living. And uh, that's the end of the quote. Uh, I know the language is uh, a bit cumbersome at times, but um, <laughs> it, it seems to be that, you know, Chris, uh, Chris Dana is a purely uh, late 20th century French philosopher, and it's very rare to find a late 20th century French philosopher who doesn't write like that. In fact, that's probably some of the more um, transparent late 20th century French thought that you'll find. So uh, go read uh, Foucault or uh, Derrida. It gets even more fun. Uh, the third lecture is a reading of several fiction writers, uh, including Isaac Dennison, uh, Bertolt Brecht, uh, Sorot, and Kafka, with emphasis on the implications of their work had for Arendt's political formation in action. Um, and while this was kind of interesting to think about, the sort of influence of fiction, I didn't really find uh, Arendt's reading or Chris Steva's reading of Arendt's reading especially compelling or interesting. Um, uh, in the last two lectures, she mostly discusses the political relevance of forgiveness, memory, and judgment. Uh, Kriseva is, is, makes some peculiar statements about Arendt, like uh, that Arendt wasn't aware of the large corpus of 18th century treatises on aesthetics and taste, uh, which I find to be uh, pretty unlikely considering Arendt's uh, near encyclopedic knowledge of, of Western philosophical traditions to, you know, to think that she didn't know of you know, uh, Longinus' essay on the sublime or, uh, you know, uh, the, the other work that comes out of the 18th century aesthetic philosophical traditions um, like Kant. I mean, uh, Arendt knew Kant backwards and forwards. Um, she gave a whole series of lectures on Kant, I think. So um, that, that's a claim that I'm not sure has much credibility. But overall, this book uh, could have been much better, I think, if Chris Dave herself was a political philosopher, which she's mostly not. Um, though she does bring interesting points to the issue at, at hand, considering her, her background in theory and psychoanalysis. Um, it was enjoyable to, to get to read a synthesis of Arendt's work from someone whose work ep epitomizes, really, interdisciplinarity and doesn't rest purely within the realm of philosophy or political science. But this is uh, ultimately a double-edged sword for the book. Uh, while I always found Chris Davis' arguments thoughtful and pretty much well-argued, they always lacked a certain historical force, I found, that could have been better lassoed with a tighter focus on Arendt's purely historic political uh, concentration and expertise. Uh, if, but if you like Arendt, um, it, it, it's an interesting book, interesting, interesting series of essays. Uh, Hannah Arendt, Life is a Narrative by Julia Kristeva.